Hello, this is uh, Toby Yunus of A Gypsy's Kiss, a blog where we talk about the hunt for forest fens, hidden treasure in the mountains someplace north of uh, Santa Fe. I wanted today to share with you a mapping tool uh, that I use. Uh, the benefits of this tool are that it's online, it's free, and it's also ad-free. Uh, and it provides you a variety of map types in a single location. So the easiest way to get to it is to scroll down on one of the uh, Gypsy's Kiss screens and go to related links and you'll see the resource GMAP4. That link will take you directly to the maps. An alternative to that is to open a Google search um, uh, window and then just enter GMAP4 and it'll be right at the top there. This takes you to their home page, uh, but their home page has the uh, start menu right there. You can go to start GMAP4. And of course, once you're there, um, uh, once you're there, you can, uh, you know, add it to your whatever your bookmarks are. I'm going to go back to this one right here just because it's convenient. Uh, first thing I usually do. Well, let me show you what's on the page up here. You'll see the traditional Google mapping directional icons uh, down here. The legend for uh, measuring distances on the map. Over in this corner, it's really important uh, because the what uh, you see there are the GPS coordinates in digital format for the cursor and for the center of the map. And as you can see, as I move my cursor, it actually changes the uh, GPS coordinates. And right here, you'll see is a center marker, and that stays steady unless you move the map. So one of the tools, uh, one of the ad advantages that I take of this is I move the map, I'll, I'll, I'll grab the map and move it around uh, so that I can place what I'm looking for right under the cursor, and that gives me a very accurate GPS coordinates. If you're not a big fan of uh, GPS coordinates and would rather use UTM or Latlon, uh, you can click on the menu scroll down, and right here you can make that change, UTM, Latlon long and you can select whatever you want. The UTM puts uh, a, um, a uh, uh, what do you call it, a grid uh, overlaying the map and you can use it from there. Uh, it just so happens that my other mapping software, All Terrain, and my Garmin GPS receiver are all uh, tuned right now to digital GPS coordinates. So it works out for me uh, because I can literally download uh, coordinates from here and from my other mapping software, All Terrain dot com uh, and put them into my uh, G my portable GPS receiver. So as you can see, we've got the menu right here and right next to it, the list of terrain maps. It's all it's always sent when you sign on. It's going to be set to the topo the topo Google terrain uh, right there. We're going to change those in just a moment. So the first thing to do is uh, get to the location that you're searching. Uh, use your drop down menu. Go to search and I'm going to enter one of my favorite search locations or search beginning locations, uh, Eagle Nest Lake in New Mexico, USA. I try to give it as much information as I can to get started. I have three options here. I can add this to a search list. I can search it and leave a mark behind, uh, or I can just search it and uh, move from there. So I'm just going to search it right now. And uh, we all start, it always starts at the T1 terrain map, but as you can see, I can use this drop down to select the different kinds of maps. There's the Google Street Map, the Aerial Google Satellite Map, the Aerial Google Hybrid, which is the combination of street and satellite, and the Aerial USA, uh, which uh, takes a little bit longer to load, but seems to me to give me a little bit more um, three dimensional two-dimensional and three-dimensional detail. Uh, so they, whatever satellite uh, imaging software or management software gives us just a little bit more detail of uh, the area. Below that are the to topo maps. When you select the to uh, topo Google terrain, it just goes back to the terrain map. And I'm going to zoom into its highest level. Uh, and as you can see there, it, it still doesn't provide as much detail as you want. But because my map is centered on my cursor, I can go back to my street map and it pretty much stays the same level of zoom, which I think is a real advantage. Uh, and the re it, because it's a real, the, the reason it's a real advantage is now I can uh, do a screen cap of each one of these maps in different, uh, you know, the different categories, whether it's a topographic map or a satellite map. I can put them into Photoshop and I can create a composite map of m multiple layers uh, that include the physical layer as well as the topographic layer. And it makes a real nice map to navigate from when you're uh, when you're out there in the field.
So I'm going to go back to my T1 map, and as you can see, I'm at the highest level of zoom, uh, and I'm going to use the grab, and I'm going to move to an area that's always interested me right here, and I'm going to move that under my cursor right there, the center of the cursor. I already know what the coordinates are right there. As I zoom in further, I'll get actually get uh, more detail. Uh, but as I said, with the terrain map, you're zoomed in as far as you can. Uh, but I can see it from a street map perspective, which gives me almost no detail whatsoever. A, an aerial Google satellite and the aerial Google hybrid. Uh, I can zoom in just a little bit further with these mapping tools. So I'm going to take it in a, a little bit. But one of the interesting things, of course, is when you do the terrain version, the T1 map, uh, you don't get, you don't actually get a lot of detail. It's very much focused on the terrain. When I go to the hybrid, you can see that, and I know, for example, this area right here on the Cimarron River is referred to as the Horseshoe Mine Day Use Area. And the reason I know that is because the cursor is right about where Horseshoe Mine is located. And the reason I know that is because I've actually searched Horseshoe Mine. But you can't see it, and uh, you need a little bit more detail. So I'm going to leave it at this layer, and I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more. And I'm going to get that cursor where I want it. And I believe, if I remember correctly, it's right around this area, maybe closer to this area here. I'm guessing at this point. But we're going to find out how close I am, because what we're going to do is we're going to drop out to the MyTopo USA Canada map. And what I know about that is that the topo maps, the USA topo maps, uh, locate uh, features like mines. So there indeed is our horseshoe mine. And I'm going to put the entrance point to that mine directly under my center cursor. And now I can record the exact GP co GPS coordinates for uh, that location, Horseshoe Mine, on the Cimarron River. A and indeed, I actually have pictures of it because I went there. Uh, and of course, like all searchers, I was disappointed. Uh, I can get more, a little bit more topographic detail with the G GP USGS maps, the US Geodetic Survey maps. But at this level, they're they're pretty much the same. I mean, uh, they might have some additional information. Uh, the advantage to what one of the advantages that I've discovered uh, with the use of all of these different uh, map categories is that they each provide different kinds of information that in combination might be useful to you. So I won't go into a lot of detail. I'm already at what about five or six minutes for this uh, video and that's way too long uh, the best way to find out more about this is to go explore it your menus are here you can play with that and your uh, map types are right here so enjoy have a good time with it and I suppose if you have any questions ask me but I'll probably direct you right just right back to the map okay have a good day and have fun and good luck in your search